Hello. Helps if I unmute the mic. Hello, friends. Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. Welcome to my craft room. I am look for, looking forward to creating uh, and sharing with you tonight. I love to share creative ideas and hopefully inspire your creativity. We'll be making this project um, all the way through step by step together. And I count on your feedback and your votes to decide what papers and things that we're going to use for the project. So thanks for being here with me. Crafting is always more fun with friends. So I'm excited that we're together. Uh, again, it feels like a long time. Our last video I pre-recorded because I was out of town um, and uh, we were supposed to have Crafternoon today. It's the 20th of September. Normally I have my Crafternoon event every month on the 20th at 3 p.m. Central Time. Unfortunately, uh, due to circumstances beyond my control, I had to move that to Saturday. So that will be coming up this coming Saturday, um, the 24th at 3 p.m. Central Time. Uh, super excited about our fun fold card. Those of you that placed a qualifying order of $50 or more last month got a packet in the mail from me. I believe at this point they've all been delivered. Yesterday the, there was one left that said it was out for delivery. So, um, so you'll need your packet on Saturday. Those of you that didn't get a packet, that's okay. I hope you can tune in anyway. I'll be walking you through the entire card and then I'll be showing you other uh, versions of the fun fold that I've created. And that's where um, I, I I got delayed. I had um, some car trouble this weekend when I was out of town. And so my car is uh, still is still six hours south of me in southern Iowa, um, hopefully being repaired. I borrowed a car to get back home here, but it did put me behind. So thank you for your patience. Uh, very excited about that. In fact, the products we're using tonight will be the same products that we're using on Saturday. So we're going to use... Um, I think it's a suite of products, a pro products actually called Bows of Holly uh, is the name of the suite from the mini catalog. We're going to use the Leaves of Holly bundle and also the Bows of Holly designer series paper. So thanks for being here. Oh, my loaner car is awesome <laughs> because it's my sister's car and it's way newer than my car. Um, she was uh, taking my mom um, to her house anyway. So they took my mom's car and she very kindly loaned me her car, which I'm too nervous to drive it. It's sitting in my garage after I got home. So I'm walking everywhere right now because I don't want to wreck it. So, um, oh, your granddaughter's at the University of Iowa. That's my alma mater. I was, uh, I majored in psychology at the University of Iowa. So go Hawkeyes. So that's so fun, Kathy. Awesome. Um, yes, I grew up in Iowa. I'm from Cedar Rapids, Iowa originally. And now I live in St. Paul, Minnesota. Anna, you don't have, uh, you don't have sound, I think. I think everyone else has sound. Give me a, um, let me know if you can hear me okay, everyone. Anna, you're over on Facebook, so I'm not sure what the issue is there. So sorry about that. Uh, you probably can't even hear this explanation. Um, those of you that prefer closed caption, um, my streaming software does not let me turn that on before the video, but I can do that after the video. So again, you may not um, be able to um, hear this, but um, if one of my viewers would just post that comment and say that closed captions will be posted after the video, that would be super uh, appreciative. Thank you so much. Janine hears me loud and clear. Thank you, everyone. You guys are on YouTube. YouTube's good. Hopefully Facebook will play along. So I got a thumbs up though from Jean. So I think we're good to go. All right. I'm so excited. Let's go ahead and make our card. Um, I'm going to switch cameras. Let's let's get this party started. So thank you, Janine. Appreciate that very much. Um, you guys can hear me. Yay. I love it when technology does what it is supposed to do, right? <laughs> All right. I hope you guys are ready to relax and create because, oh my goodness, the anxiety with my car has been uh, too much. So I'm ready to relax and create uh, before I make the six hour trek back. So let's uh, take a look here. We've got the leaves of holly. We've got the dyes that go with this bundle. I did want to give you a heads up. These dyes are on low inventory again. They're so popular. They keep selling out. So um, if you move fast, you might be able to get them. Um, if, if you go to order them and they're not available, uh, shoot me an email, susan at susanstampfield.com. 
and uh, let me know. Let's see, where is it? Where's my email? Oh, it's here somewhere. <laughs> there it is. Uh, shoot me an email and I will uh, keep track of that for you and notify you when that is back in stock. It was, I stacked, I just checked right before the video and it's on low inventory, but it's still there. So fingers crossed you get it. Um, I also wanted to point out free project sheets. A lot of you have been requesting the um, Dancing Santa project sheet. I want to let you know if you uh, subscribe to my uh, email. So go to suestampfield.com, click on subscribe, uh, my free project sheets. You will get that in your welcome letter along with two other project sheets. So um, no worries. If you want the which one, um, just shoot me an email and I will get you sorted and I'll get you that. That came out to my subscribers um, uh, previously. So I will get you that one as well. So we've got our dies here. Um, we've got the paper. This is the Bows of Holly Designer Series paper. And these are the different patterns in the pack. Uh, most of these pieces are three by four. <laughs> this one is not. Uh, this is one of the patterns that we're using for the Craftoon project. And I literally am completely out of this pattern, except for this that I stole out of the packet that I need to put together uh, for Craftoon. So I can tell you we're not using this one tonight uh, because it's already cut to size and I need it for that project. But I wanted to show you what all the pieces in the pack look like. And let's look at the other sides here. So one side is very patterned. The other side is a more neutral um, so works with a lot of things this one is really good to do the um, die cut the the leaves themselves the holly leaves so all right let's flip this back over and let's take a look at the card that we're making um, this is the card that we're making tonight this is the fun fold design and we're going to do a different designer series paper this one will be coming out as a project sheet but of course, we'll share the dimensions with you here on this video. But project sheets are nice because you can just print them out and uh, start creating. So again, uh, free project sheets, go to suestampbuild.com and click on subscribe. So hopefully you've got that. Take a quick screenshot because I'm going to make this go away. So it's not in our way. We need to craft here. <laughs> so I'm going to hide that. I'll uh, pop it back up again later in the video if you didn't have a chance to um, to grab that. So, um, so yeah, this is, I agree, Janine, this accordion fold is very fun and I'm really into these right now. So, um, this one is a very easy card to make, but it's a little bit different, a little more exciting than a kind of a regular open and close card because of that accordion fold piece. So let's uh, do a quick recap of the, or a quick uh, rundown on the dimensions here. It's not a recap, I haven't given them to you yet. Um, the card base is your standard quarter sheet of cardstock here in the US. So that is four and a quarter by five and a half. And then the accordion piece is uh, nine and three quarters long by four and a quarter wide. And it's scored at three and a quarter and six and a half ignore my boo-boo there. <laughs> and then the designer series paper is three inches by four inches. Now our designer series paper for the most part, other than our six by six, does come 12 by 12. And so three by four works perfectly with 12 by 12 because you have no waste, right? So uh, this card is a perfect to um, mass produce for Christmas, but still have a little bit of interest in it, right? I'm just realizing I've neglected to cut this piece. As you might have already figured out, this inside piece is also three inches by four inches. I didn't have that on my post-it note, but it is the same as the designer paper and I didn't cut it. So we'll have to do that. So uh, yeah, so we need to decide what we're doing. Now I've already done this one and I did add a little, a little bling on there. We got some red rhinestones just for a little extra Christmas sparkle. And of course you wouldn't have to do this card for the holidays. You could do it pretty floral paper here would be absolutely gorgeous. So many options. Um, you wouldn't have to emboss the base, but <clears throat> you guys know me, right? <laughs> I love embossing. I love embossing. So um, when I do this, um, this piece, we, we're going to use a different designer paper. Okay. So we can't use this one because I don't have enough and I need that for, <laughs> for Saturday. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? Uh, and I just ordered more stuff, and I think I forgot to more of that order more of that paper. What was I thinking? Actually, you know what? I'm going to pull this back in the shot so that you can write the, um, screenshot that if you haven't had a chance to, to track those down. We're not going to use this because we already have that one done. And again, this will go out as a project sheet, but we're going to have a, I want to have another, I always like to do two versions in the project sheet. Well, not always, but it's nice. So we'll have the second version also in the project sheet. So we just need to decide which paper we're going to use. So we could use these pretty poinsettias, poinsettia, poinsettia, depending on who you ask about how you pronounce that. Um, and then we have this beautiful uh, forest of trees. We have um, this one that is kind of a, um, a collage feel uh, with different um, um, colorations of the holly and so forth. And then we have this one that has kind of a Sahara sand a background. At least that's what I found it goes closest to. All right, I have to move that out of our way. Okay, I've already filled up all my room. How, how does that work? <laughs> so good at that you guys all right so we have four options here um one two three and four if you could vote which one you think we should use for the card we're creating then we can go on to discuss our cardstock that we want to use so if you can vote on number one number two number three number four we're going in order this way like a Z. <laughs> One, two, three, and four. So drop me in the links, or you can say trees and poinsettias. That's totally cool too. Um, seeing lots of votes for the forest, the trees, uh, quite a few for the uh, poinsettias. All right. Hey, Alma, I'm glad you caught me live too. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It looks like these two are the most popular. So I'm going to pull these aside. And oh my gosh, we might have to make two cards, you guys. Wouldn't be the first time, would it? <laughs> All right, so this is the paper I had pulled up pulled out in case you uh, had voted for this one. This is Sahara Sand. This also would actually look quite nice on Crumb Cake. Where's Crumb Cake here? Now we're not, not going to use this one, but just so that you know, it would look nice on Crumb Cake as well. But we're not going to use that. We're going to set that one aside. And the Crumb Cake does not want to go back in, so I'm going to pop it up there. Ha! Huh. All right, so I've got our bases here. Now this one um, is obvious to me. We would either use red on this one or we would use white and with the trees i think we're definitely going to go white so um let's go with that we're, we're gonna we're gonna make two here what the heck what the heck all right so we've got some cardstock here uh this paper has um uh, mossy meadow, uh, old olive, evening evergreen, Sahara sand. It has a lot of greens in it. Uh, it has um, soft succulent in it as well, but not in these patterns. So um, let's just do a little matching up here and see what we think. That is quite nice. That's with the evening evergreen. Let me try it with the old olive, which I think also is nice. My gosh, way, way back in the day when I first started crafting with Stampin' Up, gosh, oh, I signed up as a demonstrator 25 years ago, but I started making things with their products before then. Um, I was, all, real red and old olive were my go-to Christmas colors. So just for historical uh, nostalgic sake, let's go with that matchup. Um, and then let's do evening evergreen on the tree. Oh, wait, that isn't old olive. My my bad. That's actually mossy meadow. Excuse me. This is old olive. But I think I like the mossy better. Yeah, I think the old olive is a little too yellow. So I'm going to boot that out. We're going to go with the uh, mossy meadow for this one. All right, Mossy Meadow, and then we'll use the Evening Evergreen for the trees. Hopefully you are all in agreement with those. Uh, the poinsettias um, have those dark leaves. They do, that is true. This one doesn't really have the leaves in the pattern. It has the middle, which has a little bit of a lighter green. So we're going to pick up on that. So let's go ahead and get these scored. Um, because we're going to double, double duty here. <laughs> That's what we do at Christmas time, right? What I like about this, this um, fold is you could do exactly what I'm doing. And you could use every paper in that pack and make a variety of different cards if you send out a lot of cards for the holidays. So let's go ahead and take our piece here. 
and let's score this. So I'm, I'm looking at my cheat sheet. It's four and a quarter by nine and three fourths. I'm going to score it at three and a quarter. And at six and a half. So now you can see my paper trimmer ends at six and a quarter. So no worries. I'm just going to pull out the handy dandy little arm. And there's the six and a half inch mark. So let's slide over to that. And we'll just crease that. And while we have this out, since we're doing double, double duty here tonight, we're going to score this one quickly as well. All right. Two cards. That's not too much, right? There, remember that one video where we did five? <laughs> that was a little crazy. All right. There we go. Let's pull this aside. Don't think I need the trimmer anymore, but um, all right. So we've got our pieces here. We're going to accordion fold those. So what that means is we're going to fold it this way and then fold this one back. Okay, so it's going to look like a Z when you get it folded. And we'll get our handy dandy. Oh, we're dropping things. Mm, well, that's pretty much how we roll around here. I'm just going to crease those folds, okay, to make my Z. And then I'll do the same on this one. Give it a crease and then fold this one back the other way. So Z for zigzag, right? <laughs> Wait, my Z is upside down. How does it go? Z, 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 <laughs> whatever. All right, so we've got those. Um, I'm a fan of embossing, so we're going to do a little embossing on our back backing piece here. So we've got our red and we've got our, our white. Uh, for this one, I used the, one of my favorite go-to uh, folders, and that's the Quatrefoil Tile Embossing Folder. Um, we're not going to use that since we already did. So let's look at our other options. I think this one might be fun for the trees. This is like, I, I haven't even opened this one yet. This is called Whimsical Woodlands. Unless you think this will be too whimsical for our more realistic trees. Um, and then we won't use it. You guys can tell me what you think. So this is the Whimsical Woodlands. So it's all different trees. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, Quatrefoil. We're not using that one. Why? I just cannot leave that one alone, I guess. I guess we could use it, uh, but we can use a different one. So we've got the brick. We've got Time Worn Type. And we've got the musical notes, which would be really nice if I was going to do a musical sentiment on this, but I'm not. Like a Christmas song. We have a lot of sets that have the words for Christmas songs. That would be a good choice, but I'm not using that. So um, let's pick a couple here. We've got um, the bricks. We've got the type and we've got the trees. Let me know, um, um, all right, which one should we do first? Um, doesn't matter, let me know your vote and we'll, we'll pick two of them to use for our two different cards here. We'll use two different ones. Trees, uh, time-worn type and brick and mortar. Well, Jean's throwing another, another choice at me. Uh, timber, huh? Hmm. Hang on. Across the room. <laughs> uh, we could use the timber one with the trees. That is true. Uh, bricks and trees, either with either. Type. I love that type one too. It's time more type is one of my favorites. I agree with you. I'm seeing lots of different choices. <laughs> All right. I'm going to make an executive decision here because I think it's pretty much across the board that you are um, got votes for everything. So let me bring in uh, <laughs> the die cutting machine, which is not a big deal except for it means I got to clear some space, you guys. So glad at using up every inch. I think I need to redesign my craft room so that videos I could maybe like do a fancy camera shift to a different camera where the die cutting machine is. But that sounds like a lot of work. So probably won't happen. All right. This is the whimsical trees. Let's try it. Let's see what we think. 
six by six folder. I want this because this card is landscape and this is a directional folder. You do want to make sure uh, that you put it in the right direction. It's probably obvious to you, but I need to talk these things through or I do it wrong, right? And then I just save it for another card, right? We can fix almost anything in crafting. All right. So there are the trees. Very nice detail. Let's see what that looks like here. We've got our trees and our evergreen. And I'm putting them on the wrong way. Just match it up and see what we think. That's what that looks like. Um, I should have, when I cut that paper, I ended up with another piece. So let's just see what the brick looks like. Oh no, it was the timber, wasn't it? Sorry, timber. And then we'll do the time-worn type with the poinsettias. I've already had an action cam. I don't need a third angle view, right? But I think I could add a third camera and I could just go to that one. But it means I'd have to run around more. But I'd get more exercise. <laughs> uh, but sometimes the more technology you add, the more things can go wrong, right? All right. So I've got my, my timber here. All right, so after seeing it, let me know in the comments. I know it's hard to see on this camera with the white. Let me know in the comments if you prefer the timber or the trees. Trees with the trees or the timber with the trees. So let me know what your thoughts are on that. While you're discussing that, I will grab the time-worn type and we'll do the red. Now this time-worn type, believe it or not, is also directional. It has just a few random words in there. They don't really have full sentences like this says, we know what, and then it stops. Um, so personally, that would bug me if it was going the wrong direction. So <laughs> I do like to make sure it's at least going the right direction. Looks like the majority, I'm seeing votes for both, but I, the majority are voting for timber, although it's really close. So I'm going to save the trees for another project. I'm actually thinking, okay, we're not going to do three cards because that would be crazy, right? But <laughs> I just had a thought and I'm going to show it to you so we can, you can have that idea. And maybe one of you will make this card and you can share it with me. Show what, show me what it looks like. All right, so here we have our time-worn type to go with our poinsettias. And I will save the trees, the whimsical trees, for another project, but they would be really cute with... This designer paper from the gnomes, it's a little more whimsical, so that would be kind of a fun matchup, or there's a lot of other things that would be cute with be cute with the Santa train as well. So let's set that one aside. And I think we're done with this. Let's, uh, well, we're done with it for now. We're going to need to do a little bit of die cutting probably. All right, let's set that aside and let's go ahead and assemble our cards here. So when you put this card together, before you stick anything together, you want to just make sure that this accordion piece is going to open up like that. If you have it rotated, it would open down, um, which is another option. Um, but the way that I'm used to this card, and I think it's maybe a little more intuitive uh, for people to open it up and see that inside. Okay, so that's having the score part, the, the top, the first score at the bottom and the second score at the top. So I just always double check it before I stick it down. So let's go ahead and add some adhesive here. With my adhesive, I do tend to twist it like that, kind of like a little pirouette, um, and that just breaks the strings on the adhesive. Um, it works better for me that way. All right, in case you're wondering why I do that motion. All right, give that a press, and then we're going to go ahead and stick our pretty trees on top here. The 
other side of the trees is the one that's really good for cutting holly leaves because it's got the different greens right in it. Ooh, so pretty. All right, we've got a good start on that one. Let's go over to this one. Did I just do that wrong? No, I didn't. Okay. Whew. Momentary panic that I used the wrong color. Ah, we're all good. All right. All right. Got some sticky on there. Going to make sure I'm opening it the correct way before I commit. <laughs> and stick it down. Um, so this time-worn type uh, embossing folder, it is a 3D embossing folder, and it's just, it's very subtle. It's just kind of a, kind of a speckly, almost like a stucco um, effect, or I don't know. It's hard to describe, but it's, um, it just is, it gives it a lot of really nice texture. And then we'll add our poinsettias on top. See, I pronounce it both ways. Sometimes I say poinsettia and sometimes I say poinsettia. Doesn't matter, right? You know what I'm talking about. All right, so there are our two different versions of this card. Did I just do that backwards? Well, good thing they, no, I didn't. I did it right. But the nice thing about this paper, it doesn't, it's not directional. So <laughs> if I did it wrong, I could flip it around, right? That's useful sometimes, isn't it? All right, so we've got those. Um, those are started. We're ready for our next step here. So we're going to do our front. Now, I have pre-die cut um, the two labels that come in this set. Um, they work well together. Like here, um, I've got the label that I die cut it out of the um, that pattern uh, that was on the back of this one, I think it was, it was on the back, yeah, it was on the back of this one, um, and put some old olive leaves behind it, and you can put the label right on there, or you can do it uh, in white like I did here, and then um, use it that way. So we've got this one, and we've got this one, so we could do the smaller label on the trees so that you can see more of the trees, and the bigger one on the poinsettia, or we could do it the other way. We could do the uh, the bigger one on the trees and the smaller one on the poinsettias. So give me a vote. Um, we'll just say flowers and trees. That's easier to type, okay? So bigger label with the flowers or bigger label with the trees? Let me know and then I'll intuitively know what you wanna do with that one. So bigger label with which one? with the trees or the flowers. Bigger on both. I know, so many choices, right? That's the thing with crafting. There are so many choices. So this one, just to show you, um, has leaves that go behind it. In case you're wondering, you, can, you don't have to use them, but it's a die that comes right in the set that cuts the, the solid background for the leaves. So this is what it would look like with the, um, and we will do be, be doing that regardless of which one we put it on. And I can cut a second big, la big label. Um, looks like big with the flowers is what I'm seeing. Okay, let's go with that. All right, so we're gonna take some multi-purpose liquid glue and we're gonna dot this on here. And I'm hearing a lot of thunder outside. Uh, we are we are having storms um, in the forecast for tonight. So I do have a dog that is afraid of storms. So we'll see how this goes. And hopefully my signal will be good for us. When I was down at my mother's, uh, uh, my family's Christmas tree farm in Southern Iowa, which is where I had the car trouble, um, we had a major rainstorm uh, when all this car stuff was going on. It got four and a half inches of rain uh, at the farm while I was there. So, so I'm just dotting on this uh, multi-purpose liquid glue. I just want little dots of it. And then with this die, it is really cool how it cuts this frame. I personally like to put just a couple dots of multi-purpose liquid glue on the end of this frame and tack it down. Otherwise, it can get caught, in my experience, um, in the envelope or um, 
you know, and get get wrinkled and I don't want that to happen. So got a little messy with my glue there, but I think we're good. So um, I'm going to let that set up for a minute while I, um, before I put my leaves on. So we've got our sentiment here. We're going to put this one on the trees and we'll probably add a, a, might add a ribbon on this one. We'll see how we go. Let's go ahead and put a sentiment on here. I'm going to, well, this dries a bit. Got glue everywhere. Good job, Sue. <laughs> All right, so our sentiment for our trees. Um, let's go with what do I have here? I've got seasons greetings. No, oh, this is Christmas wishes. We can do that one right on there. Why don't we do that for the trees? Um, because I'm lazy and it's already on that. Oh wait, would this fit? No, I don't think this. This is too long. This is the Peace and Joy from the set. That's a little bit too long. So I'm going to go with the Christmas Wishes, and I'm going to do it in the color that will match our cardstock. So that's the Evening Evergreen. And let's go ahead and... Hey, Carol Thompson, you were in, you were in, in uh, Minnesota. I was down in Iowa. <laughs> I hope you had a nice trip. All right, I'm going to just stamp this right here. And so let's see how I did. All right, this one is uh, the photopolymer stamp. Oh, I get a little close to the edge there, but oh, that's all right. Um, this is photopolymer, so you can die cut ahead of time, or you can stamp it on the cardstock and then die cut it after. It's totally up to you. So let's go ahead and pop this up. Of course, of course, I'm going to put it on dimensionals. Hello. Let's grab a couple large dimensionals and stick those on our label and pop that on our card. And here comes the rain. I hope you can't hear that. It's really pouring out there. All right. So we're going to put this kind of off to the side right here um, on this one. You know, it's going to be random on this one. I staggered it between poinsettias. Um, you can do the same here. And, you know, if you want to leave certain trees uncovered and whatnot, um, we're going to stick this kind of a little crooked there. That looks, that also looks crooked. <laughs> All right, that looks better. All right, so we've got that. Let's see how we're doing over here. Looks like I'm kind of sort of set up. Let's go ahead and just stick those leaves on right there. And I'm going to grab a scrap paper here. Okay. You know, I should have put that glue on before I put my words, but that's okay. I'm going to put the leaves up on this one. Um, how about we do peace and joy on the outside of this card? So this one, the peace and joy um, come from the leaves of Holly stamp set. They are split apart. So you can do joy and peace if you preferred. Um, I had them the long way, um, but for this label, I think I will do them um, stacked. So, oh gosh, it's sticky now because I put sticky on it. All right. <laughs> so let's do peace. I like the grid paper. We do sell these little grid paper um, pads in the catalog. They're super handy. Uh, we also have big 11 by 17 grid paper if you prefer that. I'm going to do peace and joy. I hear my son coming upstairs. I'm guessing that means that my dog that gets scared had to go to the basement. Usually once she's down there, she's, she's fine, but she does not like staying upstairs when there's a storm. Smart dog, right? Duck and cover and all of that. All right. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> all right. And I just have to stick it on the block because I keep sticking to my hand. Peace and joy. Let's try that. Ooh, dirty block. I want to just stamp it on the scrap paper to make sure I'm good. No, I don't like where I put the amber sand. Sorry, guys. I'm a little picky here. I'm going to clean that off because I don't think that's the right ink either. I think we should do it in red ink. Hopefully you agree with me. This one is going to go on our poinsettias. So... I just want to move that um, amber sand up. I just got a little extra cleaning stuff on here. Either move the amber sand up or the joy down. 
All right, let's try that. Is that going to stay put? Hang on, I got to dry it off a little bit. A little bit wet. Okay, let's try that. Uh, real red ink. Here we go. And let's see how it looks. That looks all right. I believe on this bigger label, you can do um, the Peace and Joy the long way as well. So let's close up our ink pad before I put paper in it. And I did pop up the Christmas wishes. This one I'm actually going to adhere flat though. All about options, right? All right, and that's still a little bit crooked. Ugh. It's okay. All right, <laughs> I'm going to grab this and we're going to cut two more pieces that are going to be three by four. Those are for the inside section where I'll put our sediment and so we can sign. Your dog doesn't mind the rain, but doesn't like the thunder. Yeah, it's, it's definitely the thunder that she objects to, but she's kind of adapted and now just really doesn't like any of it. <laughs> All right. And walking in the rain, she thinks is just crazy. <laughs> All right. But she's probably right. All right. So we've got our inside pieces. And... Let's take this and ah, let's go back to this card. So this one I put to friends near and far, and then I added the holly leaves. Um, the other option, yeah, we can, let's go ahead and just do that. We'll just make it easy and we'll do to friends near and far on both of them and add some holly leaves. So lost my cleaning cleanup pad here because I want this one in red. I guess I should have left that red ink pad out, right? So let's look at these cool holly leaves for a minute. Um, so we've got a detailed leaf and then a solid leaf. And they're made to go on top of each other. Sometimes it's easier for me to line it up if I do the detailed leaf first, and this is a time where I do want to add in the little stamping cushion. And I'm just going to have the leaf coming in on the edge. Okay. And then I'm going to cheat. Instead of getting another ink color out, I'm going to use the same ink, Evening Evergreen, and I'm going to stamp it on my scrap paper first and then stamp it on my card. So it's just a little bit lighter color but can you see how because these are see-through stamps when you look through it you can see that dark outline and it makes it easier in my opinion to light it up uh, line them up um, if you prefer to do the dark first and then line it up you know go with whatever works for you this works well for me so that's i'm going to go that road let's do another one just peeking in here from the top Using the same leaf, there is a, another second leaf in this set. This is the slightly smaller one. Um, again, I'm going to stamp off. And then again, just line it up. Like so. There's our little piece for the inside of this card. Did you see it trying to jump into the ink pad there? <laughs> well, I wasn't looking. All right. I do love the sound of rain. There's nothing better in my mind than crafting with rain outside. I don't know why it's, or, or reading a book. That's nice too. It's just very soothing to me. All right. And then I think we could pop on, let's just go ahead and finish this one before we finish our poinsettia card. Kind of doing double, double duty here. Um, I think a white ribbon would look really nice on this, but Evening Evergreen would too. So I think I'm going to need you to, if you don't mind voting again, if you're tired of voting, that's okay. Just sit this one out. 
but if you'd like to share your opinion, I'd love to know if you prefer the even the green ribbon or the white one. And let's take a look and, and we can see what they both look like. So you can be a truly informed choice there. So there is the evening evergreen right there. I'll probably cut the tails a little smaller if we go with that one. Um, <laughs> don't want us hold on. All right. Does that kind of give you an idea? That does look nice. I do like that. And then the other option would be the white. And this one, um, I'm going to double it up. This is a little bit thinner ribbon. So I'm going to just tie a knot and not do a bow. But I am going to double it first. So that will be a little bit, uh, it'll end up having four tails, if that makes sense, instead of two. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I've got a loop at one end. I'm just going to cut the loop. All right. Angle cut it. I need to go a little shorter there. Those are a little long. And that's what the white would look like. So white or green on the tree card. This would be a little shorter. Not so pointy. That's better. So let me know if you prefer the white or green card for the trees. Both. <laughs> Looks like some think white, some think green. Pretty. Those, uh, they are classy, right? Those holly leaves, they're just, uh, they kind of are pretty posh looking, I guess. They kind of make your card extra fancy. All right. Um, seeing even votes for both, so I'm not sure which way to go here. All right, let's go with white. Where did my take your pick tool go? Got my glue dot here. Let's stick it actually back behind the label. Tack my bow right on there. This kind of fits right down in that little little bit there. So we've got the tree card done. And this one, I don't think we need a ribbon, but dang, that crooked is just driving me nuts. I'm probably going to fix that after the video. Can't help it. All right, let's bring in our scrap paper again. And we're going to take our Christmas wishes and our leaves and we're going to clean them up. So I've got my um, Stampin' Scrub here and my Stampin' Mist. This is how I clean my stamps. I can't remember what side was wet. This side was wet. <laughs> and just a little, little stamp washing machine here. Super easy. Don't have to fold anything. I guess you have to put them away in the case, though. So, all right. I don't know where are those. Okay. All right. There we go. Did I get everything? I think so. So again, back to the real red, and we're going to do Christmas wishes on the inside of this one. And then we'll do some loops. All right, this time we're going to switch to Mossy Meadow ink because that's going to match our cardstock that's behind there. Want everything to be all matchy matchy, right? So I've got my mossy meadow ink pad. It's just a little has a more yellow in it, I think, than the evening. It's a little warmer green. Let's put it that way. So I'm doing it backwards. Oops. Let's do the detail part first. A little bit on the top. A little bit on the bottom. There we go. And then we're gonna stamp this one off and do our fill-in stamp there. I'm just going to hover and line it up. And stamp it off. Hover over. 
lined up. So classy, right? All right. Let's put that on the inside of this card. All right. Let's close up the ink pads. We're all done with the inking part. And now it's time for the fun part. You know how I roll, right? I would like to add some bling on here. Um, with this one, I think we can go with some red uh, holly berries. By our holly here. I'm just going to add three rhinestones there. Oops. All right, so there we've got our that version of the card. And then on this one, I have to open up my drawer of fun and find some. Uh, will that fill in work with white like snow? Um, if you did white ink here, yeah, if you wanted like snowy white leaves, sure you could do that actually you could just leave if you're going on white card chalk of course you could just leave it but if you're going on a different color yeah that would work um, probably gonna go with just one of my favorites and that's the elegant faceted gems i love these um let's see. oh helps if i'm on top of the plastic and not under it good heavens so got those mm that big one there and then maybe a couple smaller ones out here and they're also in clear if you wanted to do the clear a little bit hard to see but they will pick up that sparkle with the light so there we have our two different i'm still not sure about that white ribbon let's try that green one again you guys not not sure about the white it does not want to let go of that glue dot. So the glue dot is on it. That's right. Makes it easy to change, right? Let's try this. Whoops, where'd it go? Oh, it is there. <laughs> like, where'd the glue dot go? Disappeared. Let's try the evening evergreen. It needs to be a little bit shorter. And there it is with the green ribbon. So I think either would work. You could do some cards both ways, right? You could pick your, your favorite. So um, in fact, I believe we also have... Um, I don't know if this is more old olive or mossy meadow, but this would be another option that you could do as well. Uh, love those green ribbons. So fun, right? That little bit of extra green off of there. So there we have, let's look at all three cards here. Lay them out. And you could just assembly line and do a bunch of these for the holidays in different variations or of course for any event and just switch out your paper for the top so one more time on the dimensions for this one and these will be going out as a project sheet so if you prefer to do a um yeah, it is a great you do 60 christmas cards how many christmas cards do you guys do i'm curious i do uh, about 60 as well um, well, I do my team ones, which is over 300, <laughs> uh, but that's a unique card that I designed just for the team. So this one, I'm going to pull up this banner. If you would like a printable version of this project sheet that has photos of all of the uh, versions on it, um, you can subscribe to go to suestampfield.com, click on subscribe, and uh, that'll be coming out very soon. 
and you'll get a welcome letter with a bunch of, uh, with three project sheets in it when you first subscribe. So you do about 20, 150 already done. Wow, Nancy, you win. <laughs> That's amazing. You do about 10 handmade ones. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, is the base sturdy enough? Good question, Joe. Um, so this is the, let's do a quick recap on the side, on the base. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. Card base, four and a quarter by five and a half. Accordion piece is four and a quarter by nine and three quarters, scored at three and a quarter. And then again at six and a half. And the designer paper and the piece that goes on the inside are both three by four. So on these two versions, um, oh, and the white one really wants to come in and play. Um, on these two versions, I used the thick basic white to add a little bit more um, uh, heft to the card I one, because I was embossing it. Um, but the thick whisper white or the thick basic white, excuse me, is... Um, is better when you're using like a postcard piece. If it's a fold over card, you can probably get away with the regular, but this type, I would recommend the thick. Um, you don't, the, the colored cardstock is heavier weight anyway, so you're fine on that. Um, but when you emboss it, it does get a little bit more flimsy, but still seems to hold up quite well. So thank you all for joining me tonight and thank you for helping us design these cards. I think we did good. Yay us. <laughs> I'm going to flip my camera here so I can say goodbye for now. I will look forward to sharing another amazing fun fold. So crafter noon, I show one unique fun fold. Uh, we make it together and then I show a bunch of different versions of that fun fold. So uh, will the card stand up? No, Deb. Uh, Debbie, these will not stand up. These they have to put on the fridge or uh, put on a card tree or something, but this one is not a freestanding one. So good question. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, oh, the candy cane suite is out of stock. That's another good one, um, Noreen, to, that would be pretty with this. I'm sure I'll be back in stock soon. If you want me to check on it, shoot me an email, susan at susstampfield.com, and I'll, or, and I'll check it out for you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Stay warm and dry, and we'll see you next time. Uh, looking forward to seeing you at Crafternoon this coming Saturday at 3 p.m. Central Time. Yay! Take care. Have a great night. Bye-bye.